Sarah looks frustrated, breathless, wan and exhausted, the skin on her throat beginning to hang loose as if to wear it well requires effort she has not within her, her collarbone a brooch of banished beauty. She rests her hands on her seven-month swell, bowls up her voice to her daughter. What she says, you are the strong one now. That was Irish writer Paul Lynch reading from his award-winning third novel, Grace, about the great Irish famine of the 1800s. The book has just been translated into French by Albin Michel. And Paul, welcome back to the show. It's great to be here. It's a pleasure to see you again. Now, your acclaimed debut novel, Red Sky in the Morning, was a finalist here in France um, for France's Best Foreign Book Prize. There was actually a bidding war um, by publishers for that novel. And your second book, The Black Snow, was met with equal critical acclaim. With just two books, you've been called um, one of your generation's very finest uh, novelists. You're frequently compared to the likes of Joyce Beckett and Connor McCarthy. Um, what have the last six years been like for you with all that? Generally, um, trying to battle uh, the writing life with family life uh, and also the commitments you have as a writer when you're traveling and you, have, you do festivals and you do publicity. And so you develop all these different sort of um, little rooms in your mind. I'm now in the family room. I'm now in the writing room. I'm now in the publicity room. And so it's, it's, it's kind of slightly schizophrenic, you know, um, but it's, it's, you know, it's fun. Is it true when you're writing that sometimes you rewrite a sentence as much as 50 times? Yeah, I mean, writing for me is this, it's a very slow process. Um, I'm looking to, to sort of get the image in my mind down on the page. And so what I write sometimes is just, just not good enough. And so I keep revisiting it and revisiting it so that the words begin to meet the image that I can see. Because um, I'm a big believer in, in, in that, uh, that the reader should be able to see and hold what I describe as if as if they're there, or perhaps as if they're seeing it in a film. So I, I write very slowly, and um, I take my time with my books until I, I feel that they're they're absolutely right. Well, let's talk about the new book, Grace. Uh, it's just been translated into French by Albin Michel. Two million people died in the Irish potato famine when blight destroyed three years um, of potato crops between 1845 and 1851. It's a very significant moment in the history of Ireland. But lots of um, writers have problems with it. It's kind of st struck you dumb or something, hasn't it? Why? Yeah, I mean, the famine is our great Irish national trauma. Um, and uh, there is also a silence surrounding the famine because why we have this enormous amount of historical evidence, statistical, economical, political uh, research and evidence. There is there's a gap in the, in the record of real testimony from people on the ground because the people who survived it, they just didn't speak about it. And perhaps they couldn't write and and, um, and the people who, 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 who died took their stories to the grave. And so there is this silence and there is a gap in Irish writing. There are some novels, but there aren't that many modern novelists who've, who've attempted to take it on. And it is a very daunting subject because it is our, as I said, it's our, it's our great national trauma. And it's, it, 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 um, it goes into, it, it, you know, it takes the novelist into a very dark place. So that was one of the things that I had to do with Grace was how do you take the reader into what you might call a Dantean inferno, but at the same time hold their hand and make the story beautiful and sometimes comic and sometimes generally kind of um, very engaging because you're with a, you're with a child character, a 14-year-old girl. And the largest collection of famine-related art is actually on show in Ireland at the moment. It's on loan from a museum in Connecticut. Uh, why is it such a hot topic now, do you think? And why is it important to talk about again? Um, it's a good question. Um, perhaps, I, I, I mean, I know that there, that there was a very beautiful book on, on a beautiful massive documentary book on the famine that came out a couple of years ago that really stirred people's imagination. Um, but I also think that there are resonances with the, with the real world, with, with what's going on in the contemporary world now that, that sort of perhaps remind us of what we've been through. When you look at what's happening in Syria, there's huge parallels there between, you know, with that massive level of dispossession and, and you know, these arguments of power and powerlessness and life and death. Um, these are these big questions are back in front of us again, and the famine was was something that that very much brought that to the fore and and echoes this now. And was the like my migrant crisis in your mind when you were writing Grace? It, it's impossible to ignore it, you know. And I, you know, I don't seek to write 
a contemporary um, account of things in my in my writing. You want always want to have a little bit of distance, um, but di you know you could what's happening here filters in in some way, and so I could feel I could feel these these echoes at work in the book. Well, Grace is an epic tale about a young girl's journey across Ireland during the Great Famine. She's 14 when it's 1844, um, when her mother dresses her as a boy and she's, she sends her off to find work to save herself and her family. We'll talk about Grace in a moment, but first a word from the Irish literature expert, Cleona Ní Reardon, about your book and how it gives a fresh perspective on the famine. It gave voice um, to a new perspective and it, um, it also enabled people to think that, you know, the famine was also a story of children. Uh, because when the story begins, um, Grace is a, an adolescent um, and it's, it's, it's Grace and her brother, Collie, at the beginning. And very often the children are the people who were written out of the famine because the children are the people who died most. So, but was there any trepidation, though, about making your main character a 14-year-old girl? Oh, I had no choice. When I sat down to write this book, it was because I had this, this quivering feeling inside me of, of, of the character of Grace, this 14-year-old girl, and I did not quite know who she was until I started writing it. And then I discovered that she was the daughter of a character from a previous book called Coyle in Red Sky Morning, who had been forced to flee Donegal, and um, that I almost had no choice. Um, but to me, she was like a perfect character because she, she had to just, she seems to speak to me, through me, with this, this power of her own. And so my job was really to just give her, give her voice on the page. The Washington Post said that Grace is a story of ghosts, but it isn't a ghost story. It's a story of the Great Famine, but it's not narrowly um, political. It's a tale of misery, but it's not a misery memoir. You've said you don't believe in the historical novel. <laughs> what is this book? I suppose it's many things. Uh, I mean, ultimately, it's Grace's story. Um, and she, you know, this book is at times an adventure story. It's at times a romance story. Um, it is a coming of age novel, I think, of all things, because the story follows her over a period of five years from 14 until, you know, uh, she becomes a woman. And she is a she starts out pretending she's a boy. She has to become a bandit to survive. She becomes a penitent because she has seen unspeakable things and she has to do unspeakable things and she has to process this trauma. And so the book becomes also an investigation into what, what is it like to live through a time of serious crisis? What is it like to, to be a survivor of an event like the famine? Because there is, as we know, survivor guilt. And so Grace has to um, learn to live with what she's been through. And that then becomes part of the meaning of the book grace that she arrives at a place of acceptance and she learns to live again. Now, there are heart-wrenching images in the book, obviously, as the subject is the Great Famine, including Grace's pregnant mother dragging her outside um, and cutting off her hair, um, and Grace eating stolen seed potatoes, amongst other things, during her um, starvation. The language is powerful and inventive. Um, do you feel this is an evolution of your previous novels? Yeah, I mean, like, I could feel that the, the first two novels were also set in Donegal, and so I was lucky that that kind of, that sense of the Donegal landscape and its desolation and its, its timelessness gave themselves back into this third book. Um, but I, with this book, I wanted to do something different. I wanted to take the, the voice of a 14-year-old girl and somehow let that permeate the entire the entire book and so that was that was the challenge with this book and every for me every book is a, is a challenge I need to do something new uh, but also with this book it had to be very beautiful because if you're going to go into this Dante and hell you need to hold the reader's hand like Virgil holding guiding Dante you, you have to allow them to look without falling into the darkness and so the writing um I think is, is my attempt at beauty. I, I wanted to make it as beautiful as, as I possibly could. Um, Talking about new challenges, tell us about your fourth book that you've finished that's coming out uh, later this year that is something completely different and you have deserted your country of Ireland. I had to get out from Ireland, you know. Um, I felt that, you know, I'd sort of, I'd, 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 got, I'd got it out of my system for now. So the new book is called Beyond the Sea and uh, it tells of two South American fishermen who go out to sea before a storm and then get washed out into the Pacific. And so the book is about 
they're cast adrift. It's about how they deal with each other, but then also deal with things like hope. How are they going to be? Are they going to be rescued? Are they not going to be rescued? And in this gap of not knowing how do you survive, how do you keep compelling yourself to believe that you will survive? And so the book is very distilled. It's quite different from, from Grace, which is a very maximalist novel. I want to do something very distilled and fine. So there's a lot of influence from Zen Buddhism at work in that book. Very just like the haiku, very, very tight writing. Okay, I'm excited to read it. We always end with our guest's cultural pick of the moment. What have you chosen for us? I have to say that Alfonso Cuaron's Roma, a much discussed film, but I, I think it's a sumptuous, wonderful film. Um, I saw it in, in the cinema in Dublin, not, not, on, not on the television, because it is available on, 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 on streaming. Um, and it is a proper cinematic movie. It's glossy, sumptuous, widescreen, black and white. And it's a love letter to his childhood in, in Mexico and, uh, and a love letter to his childminder. And it, it's one of the most beautiful films I've seen um, in a very, very long time. And, um, you know, I, w I won't forget it very easily. And that's a big thing to say from a former film critic. Yes, yeah. <laughs> OK, Paul Lynch, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. We're going to leave you with Roma. Um, Grace has just been translated into French by Albin Michel. Remember our website, we're also on Twitter, Facebook and Instagram. There's more news coming up on France 24 after this.